Why have we historically looked for life only on Mars, when Venus is also one of our closest neighbors? In fact, it was Venus that saw the first landing of a planetary space probe in 1970. After that, scientists lost interest in our sister planet. Instead, dozens of probes were sent to Mars. Last year, scientists found evidence of biological life in Venus's atmosphere. All eyes are now on Venus, of course, and excitement is building. If you enjoy our videos, feel free to support us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Simply Space, and get ready for many more fascinating videos in the future. Venus Although most of us know much more about Mars, Venus is our Earth's closest neighbor, and actually more similar. The planet is named after the Roman goddess of beauty and love. Sometimes, Venus is referred to as the Earth's evil sister. This is because the living conditions on the surface of Venus are anything but inviting. Temperatures averaging 750 degrees Fahrenheit and a 90% higher atmospheric pressure do not exactly make exploring our sister planet easy. Actually, it's a miracle that technical devices have been able to land on Venus and return data at all. But you'll learn more about that in a moment. Before that, we have a few tantalizing facts about Venus for you. Venus is almost as big as the Earth. It's only 5% smaller and has about 19% less mass. Venus's atmosphere consists almost entirely of carbon dioxide. It is the only planet in our solar system, besides our Earth, that is considered female and bears the name of a female deity. Besides the Moon, Venus is the brightest celestial body visible from Earth. Because of its good visibility in the morning and the evening, Venus is also known as the morning star or evening star. In many ancient cultures, the celestial body was sacred. Venus was always associated with beauty, luminosity, and femininity. Researchers assume that Venus was once a water-covered planet with truly lovely living conditions. But those days are long gone. The Russians have always had a special interest in Venus. Quite unlike for us and Mars, the Russians have been the pioneers of Venus exploration. Since the 1960s, both planets have been visited by 38 Mars probes and 35 Venus probes. However, the Mars missions have been able to provide much more data. The surface of Mars is hostile, so rovers are deployed to explore the surface. On the surface of Venus, all technical equipment burns up within a very short time. The first space probe ever sent by humans to a planet was the Venera 1 probe of the Russians. It was launched in February 1961, but missed its target. The Venera probes to come also did not enjoy much success. In addition, a NASA Venus mission also failed. The first to make a soft landing on the surface of Venus was the Venera 7 probe in December 1970. It sent photos and data back to Earth for a full 23 minutes. Just two years later, Russian spaceflight was again successful. Venera 8, however, delivered only 11 seconds of analyzable data. After Venus turned out to be a completely inhospitable planet, the Americans in particular, together with NASA, turned their attention to Mars and other planets in the solar system. Soon, however, Probes are to be sent to Venus again. In addition to the Russians and NASA, India, Japan, and the Europeans have their own Venus projects in the pipeline. The reason for this interest is newly gained knowledge about possible life in Venus's atmosphere. Another aspect that is generating interest is the greenhouse effect. Greenhouse effect like on Earth? Dramatic climate changes could be another parallel between the sister worlds Earth and Venus. 
both planets are currently experiencing a greenhouse effect. However, the greenhouse effect on Venus is already much more advanced than on our planet. The data from Venus can therefore provide exciting insights into what happens to a rocky planet in the course of unstoppable warming. Is there life on Venus? Of course, speculations about whether there is, has been, or could one day be life on Venus keep surfacing. With Mars, these considerations are already much more advanced. Soon, the first manned flights are to explore the surface of Mars. Settlements are planned, and in the long term even a development of Mars as an alternative dwelling place for mankind. Researchers at NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies have found an exciting thing in simulations. Until about 700 million years ago, Venus may have been a planet covered by oceans. The temperatures were mild and pleasant due to a different composition of the atmosphere. In other words, the best conditions for life. According to biologists, it takes several million years for complex life forms to arise. The habitable period of Venus extended over a period of two to three billion years. Time enough, then, for life to emerge and to flourish. After heating and massive changes to the surface, nothing of this life would be visible today. Even if humanoid cultures had existed there, their structures would probably be several meters below the surface. There is strong volcanism on Venus. Researchers have also calculated a very similar scenario for Mars. It, too, was probably once covered by water and theoretically habitable. Evidence for Microbes on Venus In 2020, the news rolled in as a team of international scientists analyzed data from the ALMA radio telescope. The data was obtained in Venus's atmosphere. Gases and chemicals produce specific and recognizable frequencies. Thus, based on the typical wave pattern, the researchers indicated the presence of a substance called phosphine in the atmosphere of Venus. Phosphine is a chemical you've probably never heard of. That's not a bad thing either, because it's basically insignificant to our lives. We Earthlings prefer to use phosphine as rat poison. So what exactly is phosphine? Phosphine molecules consist of one atom of phosphorus and three atoms of hydrogen. Chemically correct, it is called monophosphine and belongs to the chemical group of phosphates. Phosphine is a flammable, odorless gas and extremely toxic. Now you're probably asking yourself why such a gas might be a sign of life. In fact, Phosphine can be found in nature, specifically where biomass decomposes. It is found, among other things, in the feces of penguins. In laboratory experiments, it was discovered that phosphine can be a decomposition product of certain microbes. If it occurs in the atmosphere of Venus, this is therefore an indication of the possible presence of biological processes. Microbes are among the smallest units of biological life. All kinds of other organisms can develop from them in long evolutionary processes. The first living organisms on Earth were microbes. All just a measurement error? Of course, scientists around the world immediately set out to test the microbe theory. Unfortunately, two studies quickly came to a different conclusion. First, it turned out that the ALMA telescope had been incorrectly calibrated. The calculated phosphine concentration had been erroneously overestimated by a factor of seven. Another study found no evidence at all for the presence of phosphine in the corrected readings. New evaluations of measured data are currently still ongoing. Proponents of the theory are quite happy to point to another measurement that would fit the existence of microbes. In 1978, NASA's Pioneer Venus 2 spacecraft found bacteria-like particles in the atmosphere of Venus. Phosphine also exists on Saturn and Jupiter. In fact, 
monophosphane was also detected in the atmospheres of Jupiter and Saturn in the 1970s. There, it is formed by a completely different pathway. Jupiter and Saturn are gas giants. Phosphine is produced in a chemical, physical way inside the soft planets under the action of great pressure. This type of formation can be ruled out for Venus. It lacks the energy to produce phosphine in a physical way. In addition, there is another circumstance. Biologically produced phosphine appears preferentially where small amounts of phosphorus meet acidic environments, and this is exactly what happens in the clouds of Venus. So, the chance of discovering life on Venus is far from impossible. Only new probes and on-site measurements will provide clear insights. However, we'll have to be patient for this. The Solar Orbiter and the Jupiter probe JUICE will only make brief flying visits to the Earth's evil sister. NASA is considering an early Venus mission based on the latest data. However, more details have not been revealed. At the European Space Agency, ESA, the earliest Venus exploration would be in 2025. That leaves space newcomer India and the Russians. The Venera D probe is scheduled to embark on its journey in 2025. When exactly the Indian Venus project will start is still unknown. So we can remain curious and look forward to news from Venus. Unfortunately, we could not announce actual evidence of extraterrestrial life at this time. Of course, we also hope this will change soon. Let us know what you think about Venus exploration. Would it matter to you if there were microbes there? Or would you much rather see human-like beings appear in space? Share your ideas and opinions with us in the comments.